So many people are going to be hit by climate change and by climate variability that uh, means more extreme weather, more hurricanes, more droughts, more uh, problems. All of that is known by science. But what science knows is not explained to those who need to know. So the farmer in India doesn't have the information on a continuous basis and that's what we want to have through a climate services system. Well, the, the framework grew out of the World Climate Conference that took place in Geneva where I think it was really the science communities and the development organizations in many countries who said we need to have a system of, 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 of getting knowledge out and action based on that. Today, uh, Norway is the single biggest contributor to the realization of this uh, global framework for climate services that my expert panel that I led within the UN system proposes. Uh, which is, it's good that Norway is giving this funding, but it's also, I'm, I'm getting nervous that too few other countries are putting money into this because everybody, everybody from the United States to China, to, from Europe to Africa say it's so important and we support it. How will the poorer nations get access to this information? The whole world will be covered by regional centers that will communicate with national climate centers. The national climate centers will deal with the agricultural authorities, the health authorities, the disaster risk reduction authorities, etc. of the countries, which again will have to get, be able to communicate with local organizations, local authorities, etc. So indeed, the farmer in Kenya should receive information perhaps on his as an SMS or via the local uh, farmers association or the local ministry or the local uh, UN organization, whatever, on where to plant, how to plant, what to prepare, prepare for. But of course there also has to be some assistance there. We, we cannot just ex tell them something is going to hit them, we also have to help them in defending themselves. Okay, and finally, what are you hoping for at Rio Plus 20? What's your dream? Well, my dream in Rio Plus 20 is, number one, to get more attention to this fantastic opportunity for people to defend themselves, to become more robust, to avoid the devastating effects of climate variability and change, and take advantage of the opportunities of climate variability of change and therefore also have some money put into realization of the system because it's going to slow at the moment. We need to speed up the implementation of something that everybody seems to agree in but few are really driving.